At 0123 on April 26, 1986, the reactor of Power Block 4 of Chernobyl NPP is destroyed following a series of thermal explosions. The resulting radioactive cloud moves across the European part of the USSR, Eastern Europe and Scandinavia, eventually reaching America. The consequences of the disaster are so serious that the government is forced to begin evacuating the residents of nearby towns and villages. A 30-kilometer exclusion zone is created to stop residents from returning to the contaminated area. Despite the disaster, the Chernobyl NPP continues to operate. The existence of a power station, as well as the fact that the area is no longer inhabited, leads the Council of Ministers of the USSR to set up a network of secret laboratories in the exclusion zone. June 11, 2006. The exclusion zone lights up with a flash of blinding light as clouds can be seen evaporating in the sky. After a moment of complete silence, a peal of thunder shakes the ground. Most of the government forces guarding the perimeter are killed instantly. 2008. Scientists are still unable to explain what happened. Rare expeditions into the zone usually end in tragedy, with survivors telling stories of mutated animals with incredible abilities roaming the area. According to various estimates, by 2010, the zone is home to between one and 300 unknown individuals. They call themselves stalkers, and make their living by collecting anomalous formations known as artifacts, which they sell for considerable sums of money. 2011. Despite military cordons, the stalker phenomenon is growing in numbers. However, stalkers travel primarily around the zone's edges, with the center remaining terra incognita. The few attempts to penetrate deeper into the zone have all ended in failure. 2012, a stalker called Straylock solves the secret of the brain scorcher, a man-made emitter that had blocked the way to the center of the zone for years. After the brain scorcher is disabled, all stalkers rush for the center of the zone, some in hopes of finding a treasure trove of artifacts, others in search of the wish granter. The government decides to launch a large-scale military operation. Operation Fairway, as it came to be known, involves using maps of anomaly fields to maneuver helicopters to the CNPP. Despite meticulous preparation, the operation is a failure, and none of the helicopters return from the mission. Major Dektarev, a USS special agent, is sent into the zone to investigate the disappearance of the helicopters. Disguised as a stalker, equipped with a regular assault rifle, two weeks worth of supplies, and a radio to communicate with HQ, the Major begins his journey towards the center of the zone. Welcome to Call of Pripyat, Stalker, Call of Pripyat that is, the uh, second standalone expansion pack for Stalker Shadow Chernobyl, and is subsequently the uh, most recent live walkthrough. Of course it's going to be a pausing bit like this, uh, the game just started and it's still loading a whole bunch of things. But yeah, there are a few th changes over the previous games I should go over before uh, really carrying on with the actual game. 
the console up here has been pretty much overhauled, as I'll show you. It now has a form of autocomplete. I'm not going to mess with any of these things just yet. And, well, in terms of gameplay changes, it's been made a bit easier in the sense that all of the anomalies are in specific fields and they're all marked on your map. It makes sense in a storyline sense because this is after SOC. And thus, secrets of the uh, zone, have, some of the secrets of the zone have been uh, discovered. There you go. The other way it's been made easier is that there are uh, less hostilities on the map compared to the previous games. But it has been made harder in the sense that healing items such as first aid and uh, food and bandages now actually work kind of like healing potions in Morrowind in that they heal over time instead of instantaneously. Much like Clear Sky, it keeps the whole uh, well, new animation system and upgrade system for weapons. So, weapons are kind of crappy on their base form, but they can be upgraded to be pretty damn nice. DirectX 10 again, by the way. Um, I should go over the setting. Just for the sake of showing them. Not really to break, <laughs> just to show what they are. I think they're actually a little higher than I had set them for a clear sky. But this game is actually a little bit more uh, better optimized than clear sky. At the cost of some slight level of detail decreases. But that also comes bundled with the fact that the maps well, there are only three, ma four maps total in the game. One of them being an underground that you can only go into once. But they're significantly larger than the maps in the previous game, so that kind of makes up for it. I also have a few tweaks made in the uh, user.ltx config file. I don't remember exactly what they were, so I'm not going to go over them. But I will say that, unfortunately, once again, no built-in motion blur. In fact, the uh, motion blur command line parameter causes the, the, uh, causes the game to crash before the splash screen even shows up. So, I think that's pretty much all I really need to go over. I'm surprised I can run it at such high settings while recording and get a solid 30 frames per second. But, uh, hey, bro. yeah. Let's get on with the game then. Ah. I'm going to call this very bad localization. Damn it. Um, for the sec second recording session, we'll, which will be uh, parts three and four, I believe I'm going to be uh, searching for some sort of language pack, like try to find a different translation or something. Cause seriously, fuck this. These are Russians and Ukrainians and all that. They don't speak and retard speak.
Oh, another change I forgot to mention. The change that I really don't like. The boss is over there. Go talk to him. You can only speak to squad leaders. Speak to the boss. Uh, that can't get him to punch me. Oh well. Oh yeah. I don't think you can actually ever get back up there. No, no you can't. It's surrounded on all sides by this uh, stupid bullshit invisible wall thing of a bobber. Let's go here first. Oh yeah, also on Master once again. Just uh, showing this for proof. I suppose I should go over uh, character differences here. Uh, Degaterev is obviously a military major, so he's a bit better uh, trained than the other characters you play in the other games. And as such, his uh, stamina doesn't de deplete quite as quickly as Marked One or uh, Scar. I'm still calling him Marked One, just to uh, avoid spoilers. And, uh, in fact, his stamina will actually start to regenerate while you're running like this. Like, this, uh, this is running. Bit. This walking, running, sprinting. It's better than I can explain it otherwise. Oh, uh, one last thing. I hope this is the last thing I need to explain, but uh, I'm going to be playing this a little differently. Hold on, let me pause the game here. Play this a little differently from the previous two Stalker walkthroughs in that um, I'm not on the time constraint that I had for the other two games that I horribly, horribly underestimated. <laughs> so I'll be playing it a bit more normal to my uh, general stalker playthrough style instead of trying to uh, play through it in a fairly linear fashion to get the game done before Deadline X. Without further ado, let's actually play the game. Just relax and keep moving. suit can handle it, keep going. Help me, stalker! Now, if you already have this detector, or better, when you uh, get to this point in the game, 
you'll get a flame uh, artifact instead of this detector. I think I'll manage without it. Oh look, my uh, health regen already. How the hole? We'll be returning there later, I'm not going to go there now. Instead, I'm heading to the Skadovsk. Man, they re really improved the lighting system for this game. I mean, I know I didn't set clear sky settings down uh, too low for uh, the sort of reflectivity to be uh, displayed. Also, I don't think this game has the uh, glitches with wet surfaces that Clear Sky did. Yeah, see, they're actually displaying properly. Well, mostly. Get too close and it looks like they stopped moving. Oh, also, bandits are neutral. I'm... Eh, babu Приголупил бы любую, лишь бы все нужное на месте было. Well, hello. One of the criticisms I've heard of this game is that the uh, English voice actors are not very good, and I'm inclined to agree. Ooh. Stash already. Yeah, it's not so much that the English voice actors are bad, but the production value on them is horrendous, for lack of a more suitable term. And, uh, I don't know if I could call it a mistranslation or poorly translated or just uh, trying to localize to the uh, wrong demographic. But the way they word some of the things in the English... Why am... Oh, I've got the wrong quest selected. Oh well. This game is uh, even less linear than the previous two. Which is never a bad thing. Save here. I've seen what happens in this place sometimes. I was almost hoping that <laughs> the thing I was thinking of would have actually happened, just because it's kind of funny. Huh? Did I just see a muzzle flare, or was that lightning? Put the gun away. another example. Crappy localization.
we'll return later for that. Right now I want to go to Skidovsk. So I need to do some training. Or trading. Damn it, wrong word. Also, I did uh, alter the uh, console command to allow me to toggle aim like a proper PC game. The boss is over there. Go talk to him. Wait a minute. This is not in cover, but this is. And this is. Actually, no, this isn't. Okay. Game, why you know makes sense. Memes. Hey, bro. <gasps> Stupid fire. Hey, only guy in the boat that will talk to me. Fine. Attention stalkers, an emission will start any minute now. Find cover if you want to live. This guy's left with the whole thing. Let's see if anybody stood outside the base. <laughs> That'd be nice. Free loot. Frame rate's dropping, and there's a very, very good reason for that. <laughs> 27 online contacts at once. Yeah, you're gonna need a very goddamn good computer to be anywhere near these safe houses, recording or not, and get a good frame rate while doing so. Listen up. 
Sultan wants to see you. Hey, stalker. How are you? Good. How's your bread? Fine, because I'm taking it. Well, I'm... good luck to you. I'm listening. Master. New guitar songs, too. Let's see, what else can I steal? Okay, let's have a chat with this guy. Then. Up. Sultan wants to see you. Unfortunately, they've still not managed to uh, implement. Well, let's just say. non shitty speaking animations. Speak to the big bad boss. The man himself. Спасибо, доктор, спасибо. Скажите, а у вас кроме водки ничего нет? Ну ты выдал. Концентраты, блин, сплошные. А дома так как было. Придешь вечером, а баба домашнего на стол дядячила. Пересеклись как-то возле кордона сталкер и вояка. Сталкер, солдат. Куда чешешь? Ты чё, мужик? Охренел. Это ж военная тайна. Эй, не горячись, ну не знал. А чё несешь что такое тяжелое? Весь вспотел. Да блин, вспотеешь тут. Патроны эти бронебойные на склад бери. Да класс! I don't like this man or his philosophy. See you. If you manage to stay in one piece, that is. Of course, here I found the only good bandit I've ever met in any of the games I've played. Granted, that might just be because he's uh, good at playing guitar. As you can see, or hear rather, completely different songs from the previous two games. I believe the ones that they play here are based on uh, songs from the band Fire Lake. I believe the good the bleh, I believe the guitarist from the band Fire Lake is actually the PR manager for GSC Game World. It's kind of cool. Welcome aboard our swamp icebreaker. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to this guy first.
And now we speak to Beard. Appropriately named. <laughs> And then other songs like this, I believe, are just uh, Russian folk song. Not Russian, why do I keep saying that? More likely than not, Ukrainian, considering the series is made in Ukraine. They're both former USSR territories, so... Sometimes it's a little easy to confuse the two. Заскучали, мужики. Also, for the first time in a uh, vanilla stalker game, the harmonica is actually present, used, and has songs for it. <laughs> 